The first law you gotta know is that thou shalt not eat the whole box. <laughs> Little Fig Newton joke at five in the morning. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Newton's laws, the three big ones that govern like kinematics and motion. And I'm gonna make them real simple, real quick, and break it down just how the MCAT tests it. And I'll also go over some common physics phrases because honestly, going through our high yield book, this is one of the very few physics topics that shows up on every single exam. But you gotta know it. Again, in this high yield series, this is basically Maggie and myself going through all the chapters in our high yield book. So if you want a written companion, go along with that and stay around to the end of the video. I'll tell you a little bit more about that book, what it entails and where to find it. But for now, let's get into simplifying some sciences. So when it comes to the physics on the MCAT, a lot of people freak out and it's honestly not that in depth, which kind of hurts my heart. I was a physics major in undergraduate, but if you know how to manipulate the algebra and you know some of the basic formulas and the units especially, then there's very few things that you actually have to have memorized for physics, but Newton's laws is definitely, are definitely one of them. So let's just simplify them real quick. So going to the whiteboard, I'm gonna really quickly simplify these so that you can't forget them. Newton's first law is all about inertia, but the way that I remember it is I call it the Miley Cyrus law because you just can't stop. It's all about how an object in motion cannot stop it cannot move unless acted upon. So just remember that. Newton's first law, Miley Cyrus. You'll be able to remember it because she and I have the same haircut. Boom roasted. Newton's second law, F equals MA. Just remember that, okay? We'll go into a little bit more in-depth explanation on into the video, but this is the first passage you need to understand. And then Newton's third law is just remember equal and opposite. So this is something that honestly has made it into pop culture is the idea that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Now the MCAT will kind of trick you between these two and it actually tests the second one most frequently and wearing a lot of different hats. So we'll talk about how those actually get applied, but just on the first pass, this is what you need to know. Newton's first law, inertia, Miley Cyrus. Newton's second law, F equals MA. Newton's third law, equal and opposite reaction. Before we go a little bit further, I just want to talk about some basic kinematics. I'm not going to go through this whole diagram because you probably already know all of it, but you're more than welcome to stop it, screenshot it, I mean, make an image occlusion of it on Anki if you don't already have our Anki guide. But to understand these equations, you need to understand these basic three units. So the first one's velocity, and that is how fast you're traveling in meters per second. Um, this is what it looks like a slope of. So it's a straight line slope if you're plotting distance per unit times, how fast you're going in one specific direction. If you change directions, that's not velocity, that's acceleration. And so acceleration is the derivative of velocity, but you don't really have to know that, you don't really have to understand that. You just need to know that its units are meters per second squared. This is how fast you increase your speed. So if, you're, if you have cruise control set and you're going 60 miles per hour, then that's velocity. Now, if you want to pass some grandma on the road and you just floor it and yeet on around her, then you're going from 60 to 70, then that is the acceleration. That was 60 to 70, that's the acceleration because that's you're changing your speed over a unit time to blow, to blow by grandma. And then you feel a little bit guilty that you kind of pass an old person, but it is what it is. Force is when you wreck that car. Okay, You take the mass of your car with the acceleration going by grandma and you hit a mailbox. The force with which you hit the mailbox or the mass and the acceleration with which you hit that mailbox, that's your force. And so what acceleration looks like, straight line graph of is velocity per unit time. So you're changing your velocity per unit time. And then for force, it'll look like a straight line graph. You won't see this. It's momentum per unit time, but you won't, you won't really see this. So these are really, really important um, units to understand conceptually. I mean, there's some like ohms. I don't know that you have to super conceptually understand ohms or, or, or capacitance. You don't super have to conceptually understand that to do well in the MCAT, but these three you really do. So make sure you know this chart. Okay, now let's talk about Newton's first law briefly. If you look it up, then you're gonna see something like an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by an external force. And what that means is that, um, let's say you have a ball and that ball is rolling. Okay, that ball will continue to roll in the same direction and with the same speed until something acts on it to change that direction, to stop it, or to change that speed, okay? So now, why does this not work in the real world? Why, if I roll the ball, does it come to a stop? There's nothing acting on it, right? Well, technically there is, right? So if you roll a ball, then technically you're gonna be hitting a ton of friction, and that friction is actually gonna be the first force it encounters that slows it down and brings it to a stop, okay? so. Even on Earth, you are obeying the rules of inertia, but if you see this tested on the MCAT, they'll probably say like, 
you're in space or you're in some kind of experimental um, time chamber and to ignore friction, air resistance, all of those things. Now, another way they could test inertia is if you were in space and they said that you had a ball and, uh, or a rocket ship and let's say that it accelerated. Well, that's a change in inertia, right? And the last one, which would probably be the trickiest one, is if you had an object in motion and it remained in motion and then it changed direction. So that would also be a change in inertia. So Newton's first is very rarely tested on the MCAT, but you need to look out for two buzzwords, inertia and momentum. Also, the space example is pretty important for Newton's first law. Newton's second. This is the one that's actually tested the most frequently. So Newton's second law um, is best explained by looking at the, equa the equation force is equal to mass times acceleration. So honestly, if we go back and we look at our units, then we've, we've kind of already talked about this, right? Because we, we sat here and we, we built on each of these units. And if you have our math guide and you've kind of seen that unit tree that we built out and how it really expands out and goes further even into like units like joules and stuff just by adding one thing, adding one thing. It's really important to be able to do that um, because honestly, I don't have a lot of equations memorized. I just kind of figure them out um, because I know this stuff. I, I, I know how the units build on each other and that helps me to figure it out. And that's what I, re that's what I would recommend for you too because it makes it a whole lot easier than trying to memorize, what's there, like 80 equations that can be tested on the MCAT, something crazy like that. So F equals MA is going to basically encompass Newton's second law. I don't even really know what would pop up if you Google Newton's second law, I don't have it memorized, but it's the idea that the force of an object is dependent on that object's mass and on that object's acceleration. Now, a way that you've probably commonly seen this is if we're talking about Isaac Newton himself and we, we talk about, well, that looks more like a heart. We'll call this an apple, put a little stem there. Okay, now it just looks like the aorta, but oh well. Um, so this apple falls, okay? Now what's bringing it down on Sir Isaac Newton's head is gravity, right? So we've got gravity and gravity is commonly used as the acceleration here. Now, one thing that I want to caution you about with Newton's second law is that they will very, very frequently test this in super creative ways. I've seen several questions on um, practice exams and real, MC, uh, real MCAT exams alike where they will set up like this huge story um, and, and they'll have like some kind of magnet creating this huge force and they ask you to calculate the force of that magnet. And you're just thinking like, oh my gosh, like I remember that I one time had memorized the equation to calculate force of a magnet, but now I don't. You probably don't even have to have that equation memorized. Probably what they're going to end up doing is giving you a mass and giving you an acceleration and then asking you to predict the force of that magnet based off of that. So Newton's second law, F equals MA, will masquerade as some really difficult questions, but it's usually one of the most straightforward questions on your exam and you cannot miss this. Just make sure that you keep your units together um, and you will get this question right. You've got to get this question right. I believe in you. Newton's third is the equal and opposite. Um, you'll sometimes see it written as the action reaction. So for every action, there is a reaction. It's the idea that if I take my hand and I push down on this table, technically the table is pushing back up at me with the same force. How do you know that? Because if it didn't, if I took my hand and I pushed down and my hand was pushing down harder than the table was pushing up, then my hand would go through the table, right? So that's why if you take a piece of paper and you spread it out, you push down on it, you'll see that paper kind of flex as it's trying to push back up on you. And then your hand will break through because it, the molecular bonds holding the paper together aren't quite strong enough to offer the force to push back up on your hands. So Newton's third is tested a little bit more frequently than Newton's first, but not nearly as much as Newton's second. But Newton's third is also tested in some pretty creative fashions. Um, one that I can remember seeing is um, the idea of like a mass spectrometer, um, which is just some type of like way to look at the different constituents of a molecule by blasting it up and then um, hitting a detector with molecules that have different mass, adding their mass up together and kind of trying to guess what that object is. But none of that's really important. We'll talk about that in the separation techniques video. Um, it's, all, it's already discussed in our book. But essentially, imagine that you had a detector and they accelerated a particle and they tell you that the particle weighed, uh, let's make up something that's stupid, but it'll have easy units. The particle weighed 10 kilograms and it accelerated um, with an acceleration of five meters per second squared. And they ask you, what force did the detector exert on the particle? Well, to figure that out, all you have to find out is the force that the detector felt, right? So whenever this particle, which weighs 10 kilograms, got launched and it smacked into this detector, okay, well, it smacked into this detector with an acceleration of five meters per second squared. And so 
we can just use Newton's second to figure out the force that the molecule exerted, right? So F equals ma, okay? And we just say mass 10, acceleration 5, force is equal to 50 Newtons. So if we have a force of 50 Newtons that this particle is hitting this receptor with, as long as the question is not telling us that like the receptor exploded or, or warped into infinity or something stupid like that, then we can pretty safely assume that the receptor just kind of like pushed back with a force of 50 Newtons. Or I guess depending on your axis, it might be negative 50 Newtons, but honestly the MCAT usually doesn't ask you to go uh, that, that in depth. Um, it probably would just have 50 Newtons as the answer choice. So that's one creative way to test Newton's third and second in one question, and that's a way that they'll pretty commonly do it, is ask you to use two um, or sometimes even more. And the only reason they can do that is because the way that they test them is pretty freaking easy, right? So if, if they say that Newton's second is just F equals MA, well, it's fair for them to combine these two and ask this question. Now that's it. You, so you've been scared for no reason. So that's, that's Newton's three laws. I want to talk briefly about some of the key terms that are in um, the MCAT, these are terms that trip up students all the time, and this is kind of what makes the physics section hard. But I want to show you the terms now so that you're aware of them and so that you know what they mean. So the first term that you'll see is constant velocity. So whenever I see constant velocity, I had my students, you know, highlight it, write it down, whatever they needed to make sure that it's stuck. And the reason is that constant velocity means more than just my cruise control is set. If my cruise control is set, what is my acceleration? zero, right? Okay, so now if my acceleration is equal to zero, what is my force? Well, you can use Newton's second to calculate that. Newton's second is F equals MA. So if F equals MA, if A is equal to zero, then this whole thing is equal to zero, so force is equal to zero. So that's what constant velocity is telling you. That's what they're trying to tell you, is that there is a net zero force. And so if you can imagine somebody that's like parachuting down or whatever, and they tell you that this person has a constant velocity, what they're trying to say is that the force of the air pushing up on that person is the same as the force of gravity pulling down on that person. And they're going to ask you to calculate one or the other. So that's what constant velocity means. The next term is pretty in line with that, and it is net force. Net force is something that you probably were introduced during Physics 1, but let me just go ahead and explain it real quick. Net force is the sum of all forces in one particular direction. So let's go back to our parachuter for this example. Let's say that this is me, and let's say I have been stressed out in med school and I ate a bunch, and so I weigh 100 kilograms. Okay, well gravity is going to be 10 meters per second squared because you can always just assume gravity is 10 on the MCAT. Don't hit me with that 9.81 junk. I don't care about it. And actually gravity is not 9.81 everywhere in the world. That's dependent on where you are. So let's just say gravity is 10 and we'll call it there. So the force of me pulling down on this, let's just go back to Newton's second, right? Force is equal to mass times acceleration. My acceleration is gravity. So the force of me pulling down is 100 times 10, which is going to equal to 1,000. But let's just say that they tell me in the question stem that I have a constant velocity. Okay, what's a constant velocity? That means my acceleration is zero. My net force is equal to zero as well. And so they might ask me, what is the force in this situation? And honestly, what they would probably do is they wouldn't even give you my weight. They would just say there's a parachuter and he's falling down at a constant velocity. What is the net force on the parachute? Now that would confuse a lot of students because you're thinking, oh my gosh, I know F equals MA, but I can't calculate his mass. I don't have his mass, so I can't calculate his force. And so I'm just gonna guess C. But they told you the answer when they said that this um, parachuter was at a constant velocity. If I'm at a constant velocity, then my net force is equal to zero, so my answer would be zero. Doesn't just have to happen in the vertical direction, okay? It can happen with a vehicle too. Um, if we're talking about somebody's cruising along and they're going the same speed, my cruise control is set, then my net force in one direction is equal to zero. Now, that does not mean that there are zero forces acting, okay? I have the force of, you know, the engine and the combustion going in one direction. I have the force of air resistance and friction pulling me back the other direction. All that means is that those forces equal each other and cancel each other out. So the take-home message for these two terms is that constant velocity means acceleration is zero and your net force is zero. 
And a net force describes all the forces in one direction, meaning even if my net force is zero, that does not mean that there are zero forces acting on me. It just means that the sum of those forces in one particular direction is equal to zero. So that's it. That's Newton's laws. As simple as I can make them, you don't really have to know them in too much more detail. And you really shouldn't overcomplicate these. The, the take home message here, they're what you're going to see the most is going to be these two terms, constant velocity, net force, and Newton's second law. Th that's what you're going to see most frequently. If you'd like a written guide or you want access to all of these high yield sciences before we had the time to post the videos, then make sure to check out the first link in the description. That is our high yield guide. And what this video series is, is Maggie and myself teaching through each chapter of this high yield guide. So if you, if you want to support us or you, maybe you just want access earlier because your test is soon, check out that link. We've also got a math guide, which is very um, related to this. I even have a whole chapter in the math guide dedicated to Newton's second law with example questions and how to work them out. So that'll be in the description as well. We're trying to make doing well in the MCAT and doing well in medical school as accessible as possible. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.